In this video, with the help of 3D animation, we will mainly learn that once coronavirus enters a human body, after that, how long it kills that human being means how coronavirus kills. This video is sponsored by Master 3D with Professor. We'll talk about this best-rated 3D animation course later in this video. Whether or not it is visible to us, every time a person coughs, <coughs> approximately 3,000 saliva droplets come out of his mouth and nose, and nearly 40,000 droplets come out when he sneezes. <coughs> now, the shocking part is that a single saliva droplet, or a drop of spit, contains up to 2 million coronavirus particles. And when these droplets come out, they can travel up to one meter with a speed of around 300 kilometers per hour, which is why you are repeatedly advised to maintain a social distance of at least one meter. But the question is whether coronavirus can float in the air. It has two answers. The first answer is yes, coronavirus can float in the air, but in a particular case, whether or not we can see, dust particles are present all around us. Now, as soon as a person infected with the coronavirus <coughs> releases droplets, these small droplets sit on the tiny dust particles and can remain there for two to three hours. So as soon as someone passes from this place, there are complete chances that he will inhale these droplets and will become infected. Does the coronavirus float in the air? Another answer to this question is no. Coronavirus does not float in the air because scientists have not found any such evidence that the coronavirus emerges from a person and spreads in the surroundings with the help of wind. Coronavirus spreads only through the <coughs> droplets. If the droplets released by a coronavirus-infected person can't sit on dust particles, they sit on the nearby surfaces. For instance, the coronavirus can survive on glass for 96 hours, up to 72 hours on plastic and steel, and up to 24 hours on cardboard, etc. Now, as soon as a non-infected person touches his eye, ear, or mouth after contact with any such surface, the coronavirus will enter his body. To understand how the coronavirus infects our body, you must know how lungs help us breathe. Every person has two lungs. It is called a windpipe, which means a pipe to breathe. As this windpipe reaches your lungs, it splits into two halves, or say, two tubes. These parts are called bronchi. These bronchi are further divided into smaller branches, which are called bronchioles. Now, as soon as you breathe in, oxygen reaches these numerous bronchioles from this windpipe via these two bronchi. Here is where the real game begins. At the end of these bronchioles, here are the alveoli. This is the place where oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange takes place in your body. Let's see how. The oxygen, which already entered the bronchioles, further enters the alveoli. There are a total of 600 million alveoli in our lungs, and they're really flexible. Flexible means when we breathe in, these alveoli inflate, and when we breathe out, these alveoli deflate means shrink down. So breathe in, inflate, breathe out, deflate. What happens now is that capillaries entirely surround these alveoli. These are the same capillaries our blood flows in. The remarkable thing is that the boundary of these alveoli and capillaries is thin to such an extent that even oxygen and carbon dioxide can pass through it. Now understand carefully, whatever carbon dioxide, meaning CO2, was in the body came from the capillaries to the alveoli and went out of the body while exhaling. And the oxygen that we inhaled inside the alveoli went into the heart through these capillaries, and then to the rest of the body. CO2 from capillaries to alveoli, and then out, and O2 from alveoli to capillaries, and then inside the body. Anyway, in childhood you must have studied that the whole body is made up of cells, so it's obvious that the ending of our lungs is also made up of cells. These bronchioles, bronchi, lungs, windpipe, stomach, brain, and everything else is made up of cells only. If zoomed at a large extent, the cell we are talking about would look something like this. This is the smallest unit of our body. Our body comprises 37.2 trillion cells of this kind. A cell has a membrane, 
a sort of boundary towards the outside. The whole game is to enter this cell membrane. If this coronavirus entered this cell membrane, it would make millions of copies and infect the person. Now understand attentively how a coronavirus enters a cell. In maximum cases, this coronavirus attacks the cells present on the lung's boundary. But why? Neither on the hand cells nor on the foot's cells, not on the brain cells either. Why only on the lung's boundary cells? Because lung's boundary cells consist of ACE2 receptors. As this coronavirus has thorns on it, similarly, cells on the lung's boundary have thorns on them. Thorns on the coronavirus are called spike protein, and thorns on the cells are called ACE2 receptors. Understand it this way, spike protein on the coronavirus is a key, and ACE2 receptor on the cell is that lock. This is why coronavirus attacks the lung's boundary cells, and not anywhere else, because the hand and foot cells don't contain the ACE2 receptor, and the correct lock to the key of this coronavirus is only on the lung's cell. The point worth remembering is that this cell membrane is semi-permeable. This means that not everything present around the cell can enter the cell, but a few things can, such as nutrients can go inside the cell, and the waste material present inside the cell can get out. As soon as this coronavirus gets locked on the ACE2 receptor of a cell, the cell feels it to be a friendly thing and allows the entry. This is where the destruction starts. Now the coronavirus will transfer its RNA directly into the cell and will hijack the entire cell. In simpler words, coronavirus will command the cell to halt all other ongoing jobs and instruct it to make copies of him. Coronavirus's RNA has instructions stored in its genomic code to make copies of the virus. So now, within a few days, the cell of our body will make thousands and millions of copies of coronavirus, and the availability of less space and some other factors will destroy the cell itself. Suppose that a coronavirus entered a human body on day one. Now it may take two to ten days to spread the infection for the first time, or let's say to make its millions of copies after the destruction of the first cell. This is the period we call the incubation period. This is the most prominent reason why coronavirus is spreading worldwide so fast. So certainly, coronavirus may be already present in the body of the person standing in front of you. Since he is not showing any symptoms like fever or something, or say he is in incubation period. So you are treating that person like he is not infected with coronavirus, and you interact with him without maintaining a one meter distance. As soon as this cell blasts and millions of coronaviruses are born, our innate immune system will activate and will start killing all these coronaviruses. Remember that you get fever in COVID-19 because your immune system fights the coronavirus and creates a hostile environment while fighting. For instance, the temperature of the body becomes high to kill the virus. Now, let's explore the science behind how young people are recovering. At the time of this battle between coronavirus and our immune system, our advanced immune system gets activated, which is also called the adaptive immune system, starts releasing antibodies instantly, and these antibodies get connected to the spike protein of coronavirus. The coronavirus gets stuck now because our immune system connected the wrong lock on all its keys. Due to this, the coronavirus will not be able to connect on the ACE2 receptor of the cell and will not be able to make more copies of itself by entering inside the cell. Let it all be fine. But what will happen to these so many coronaviruses that have already been made? See, as soon as antibodies get connected, our macrophages get active. Macrophages are a type of white blood cells that are a part of the immune system. Macrophages will roam to the places where there are antibodies and will eat up Hi. antibodies as well as coronavirus. The special thing is that these antibodies can connect to more than one coronavirus, because of which macrophages will be able to eat the coronavirus Hi. in bulk. Now you may have a question. When our adaptive immune system could connect to the keys of the coronavirus by making such antibodies, why didn't it connect to the very first coronavirus at the very beginning? This is because, firstly, our advanced immune system understands the spike protein of this coronavirus, 
which takes time, and accordingly makes the antibodies. The fatality rate of coronavirus is more in older people and less in younger ones. This is because the immune system of older adults is weaker. But what does a weak immune system mean? It means that in older people, these antibodies are not made in the quantity as needed. If you had understood this whole system with even a little bit of attention, then congratulations! You have also understood the working mechanism of vaccines. Not got it yet? No problem. It's very straightforward. Let's see. But before understanding the working mechanism of vaccines, here's an opportunistic reminder. Finally, I've decided to teach you how to create 3D animated videos like this video. Following this, good news! The English version of the promising Master 3D with Professor course will launch on the 1st of July 2022. Master 3D with Professor is a premium 3D animation training program that teaches you how to create 3D animated videos in record time. To avail 70% early bird discount on the original course price, make sure you visit brainrig.com and subscribe to my authentic newsletter. You must have understood that the whole game is to connect a wrong lock, which means antibodies, on the key of the coronavirus, means on the spike protein. So now what will happen is that as soon as the vaccine is injected into the body, it will give the advanced genomic code of coronavirus spike protein to the immune system. In simpler words, it will inform the immune system that this type of virus can attack the body in the future. So be ready to produce these kinds of antibodies. Now as soon as the coronavirus enters the body and before it enters the cell and makes its copies, the immune system will immediately release antibodies that will connect to the spike protein of the coronavirus. So now we know why do we get fever because of coronavirus. But why there is a problem in breathing due to coronavirus is not understood yet. Do you remember I told you that when the coronavirus makes many copies by hijacking the cell, then the cell gets destroyed after a limit? Similarly, because of the destruction of millions of cells and the battle between coronavirus and our immune system, pus gets deposited into the alveoli in our lungs. As you know, the alveoli is the only place in our body where carbon dioxide comes to alveoli from capillaries and then gets out. The oxygen goes from alveoli to capillaries and then inside the heart. But if pus comes in between the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange, will not take place, and there will be breathlessness, and in many cases, a person even dies. 98% composition of our saliva droplet is water only, which means it's almost water. So if coronavirus had been dying from water, it would have been dead because of saliva itself. But it isn't like that, so washing hands with plain water isn't enough. Sanitizer destroys the outer layer of the coronavirus. It becomes really effortless to understand any topic with the help of 3D animation. In the other videos on this Professor of How YouTube channel, with the help of 3D animation, you can learn how fast tag works and the technology behind it, how the Pulwama attack was planned, how grenades work and the technology behind it, and how the Grand Ram Temple to be built in the future will look like. Apart from this, in the next video with the help of 3D animation, we will also understand that if the working mechanism of vaccine is so straightforward, then why are scientists and doctors claiming that it will take a year to make coronavirus vaccine? Along with this, we will explore the technology behind ventilators, and we will see how a person could breathe with the help of a ventilator.